My community education uh, project was to develop a patient education handout uh, detailing how to use short-acting insulin. The patient that was the trigger for this idea uh, was a patient of mine at St. Luke's Family Practice Center on the south side of Milwaukee. Um, she was a 72-year-old Latina woman who had had uh, diabetes for about eight years with never very good control. Her last couple of hemoglobin A1Cs had been in the eight to nine range. She was on um, the maximally tolerated doses of oral medications that she could take. Um, and I broached the idea of uh, insulin a couple of times, but she was really pretty uh, opposed to trying that and really didn't want to go there. Um, of course, on a weekend when I was out of town, she had a heart attack um, and was admitted to the hospital. In the hospital, she was started on insulin because of not wanting to use her oral medications. She did receive uh, teaching from a diabetic educator while there and was given prescriptions for all of the necessary equipment and insulin and was sent home with that. But um, she called me a couple days later saying that her blood sugars were running high and in talking with her uh, discovered that she wasn't using the short acting insulin at all. She was just using her uh, glargine, glargine insulin. And I um, wasn't able to quite get to the bottom of why she wasn't using it on the phone. So I asked her to come in uh, for a session with some of our clinic staff. Just as a little bit of background on diabetes, uh, diabetes is one of the most common and severe healthcare problems currently facing people in the United States. There's over 17 million people with diabetes, um, which is about 8% of all adults. And the prevalence is increasing tremendously, 13% in the last three years alone. Some of this is probably due to increased testing and increased detection, but some of it is also probably due to increasing prevalence, mostly related to obesity. We're starting to see younger and younger people, even middle school students, uh, developing type 2 diabetes. And diabetes is uh, very much an issue for primary care. It's one of the top 10 reasons why people come to see a pr uh, primary care physician. Um, and it's also one of the one of the biggest, if not probably the single disease that costs the most amount of money in the United States. Um, in 2007, uh, $174 billion was spent on direct and indirect costs of diabetes. That's almost 10% of all health care dollars, according to the American Diabetes Association. Um, and diabetics are treated, as you know, in a couple of different ways. About one out of six is currently treated just with therapeutic lifestyle changes. Um, over half are on oral medications alone, but almost 30% are on insulin, either by itself or in combination with oral agents. So getting back to our patient, she met with a PharmD and a nurse um, to go over how to use her insulin. Um, I had a question, uh, the patient is Latina, she's pretty bilingual, but I had uh, question in my mind if that might be part of the issue, uh, but both the PharmD and the nurse that she met with were bilingual and um, said that she understood English as, as well. Um, it turned out that she was very afraid of hypoglycemia. She lives alone and was very concerned that um, she could get hypoglycemic and there would be no one to help her, so a very appropriate and reasonable concern. Um, and both the nurse and the pharmacist commented that she just needed a lot of repetition, a lot of reassurance, going through things over and over. Um, so it occurred to us that a patient education handout or some materials that we could give her uh, to both um, help with the teaching as well as to have some reinforcement at home would be very helpful. So uh, I started to look for something like this. Um, I looked through patient education materials that were available from the American Diabetes Association, from familydoctor.org, which is um, the patient education website of the American Academy of Family Physicians uh, from some Aurora resources. Um, also just did a, a Google search for patient education handouts on short acting insulin and diabetes. There's also uh, a website which is called tuotromedica.com which has um, lots of information in Spanish. Uh, what I turned up was a number of websites um, which wasn't particularly useful for this patient because she didn't have access to them. Some of them kind of went through step-by-step -step, uh, process. Um, we found a number of handouts on how to give insulin itself, which 
didn't really seem to be her exact issue, but nothing very generally on how to use short-acting insulin. Most sites that I came across seem to be written at a pretty high educational level, um, one exception being familydoctor.org, which was uh, pretty easy to read. So um, we decided to create a patient education handout specifically on how to use short-acting insulin. We want it to be very simple, um, easy to remember, and we came up with a mnemonic of TIE for test, insulin, eat. Um, we wanted it to be visually attractive, something people would want to maybe put on their refrigerator, um, have some simple pictures and be easy to read, and uh, have a reading level that was um, at a minimum for uh, all patients. So the memory scheme that we came up with is TI, which stands for test, insulin, and eat. Um, there are lots of handouts that show how to use uh, a glucometer and lancets to check your blood sugar, so we felt we could tie that into existing handouts. Um, giving insulin, and again, lots of uh, already existing information about how to do the injection, and then eating. Um, so needing to have something in your system to prevent hypoglycemia. In terms of the process for this, we first uh, I wrote a draft of it, um, talked over with uh, one of our pharmacists who suggested some additional medications and also suggested having some uh, sliding scale component to it. We did a readability test. Initially it was written at a 12th grade level and um, there's, it doesn't give you really instructions on how to decrease that, so I had to kind of play around with that. Found that uh, most of this high reading level was from a lot of polysyllabic words, and getting rid of a number of those brought it down to a seventh grade reading level. Um, I then piloted it with a couple of patients to get their thoughts and input and opinions. Um, didn't really get any very constructive criticism from them, um, but uh, they did uh, give me some ways that they thought it could be useful. Some of the challenges uh, that we encountered were how to lay it out in such a way that it was uh, friendly, uh, still kept attractive, had enough information, but not too much. Um, again, how to get to the low reading level, how to use words that uh, replace some of those longer words, um, and it, sometimes there is no uh, really shorter equivalent. Um, integrating the sliding scale was a bit of a challenge, too. We decided to keep it very simple with just a uh, one step for if the blood sugar was too high, one step for if it was too low. And uh, then found some pictures. And this was actually a little bit more of a challenge than I expected. Um, we found initially a number of pictures uh, that were in color, but uh, found that when we reproduced them in black and white, um, the plate of food that looked uh, delicious and wonderful and diverse in color looked like a mash of not really anything uh, when it was in black and white. So um, we think that this patient education handout um, can be useful for uh, primary care physicians who are talking with their patients about going on insulin or who might need it in the future to try to quiet down some of their concerns. Um, it might help the staff time, uh, especially in places that don't have ready access to uh, diabetic educators or nurse educators or pharmacists that can assist. Um, and for patients, it could be helpful in a couple of ways. One is to um, reassure that they're not going to become hypoglycemic, to kind of keep the order of events in mind, and also contains the references for what doses to use. Again, something that they could kind of put on their refrigerator and refer to. Some of the limitations of this, it doesn't uh, talk about the longer acting insulin. Um, I guess my experience has been that that hasn't been as much of an issue um, and that is something that probably could be just written in or added. It uh, does reference some other handouts for injection and also for how to, um, how to handle hypoglycemia, so uh, patients would need to have access to those as well. Uh, only a very simple sliding scale, and the notion there was just that it would get too complicated and too wordy if we tried to put in more details about that. Um, a problem with using a paper form is that any time one's uh, insulin doses were changed, you'd have to uh, give a whole new form or else start writing it and crossing things out, which could get pretty messy. And uh, just again with a paper format in a full page like this, it's probably not something that patients would take with them. 
So some uh, future steps that could be useful for this. Uh, one would be to translate into uh, Spanish in particular because of the high, high rates of diabetes in the Latino population as well as into Hmong. Um, it would be nice um, to have more culturally diverse patient pictures, although actually that was one thing where going into black and white sort of blurred those lines. Um, but especially with the high prevalence of diabetes in African American patients, it would be nice to have uh, pictures that reflect um, other cultures. It would be potentially useful to have uh, another version that had a more complex sliding scale. Um, so could just replace this sliding scale section with one that had a more specific range. And finally, a, a really interesting idea that came up as we were talking was that um, many of the glucometers now really have a lot of memory and it would be interesting to work with some glucometer manufacturers to um, have more reference information for patients. So it seems like it would be relatively simple to have a handout like this that uh, was part of a, a glucometer software package, um, a way to program the glucometer to include the doses of insulin that the patient on is on. Um, it would be ideal to have um, the sliding scale, for example, pop up uh, telling the patient exactly how much insulin they should use depending on what their blood sugars were. So overall, um, we thought that this would be a really useful um, handout that could help with um, the almost 30% of diabetics in this country that are using insulin. Any questions?